Abi? Okay. Okay, uh, gentlemen of the press, uh, we say had our meeting, the last meeting that preceded today. Uh, we had that particular meeting on two on Tuesday, on Tuesday this week. So in that particular conversation, they offered the sum of sixty thousand naira that we vehemently rejected. When we left that meeting, we informed them that we don't want to attend any other meeting without commitment from government. At any other meeting they want to call us for, there must be clear-cut commitment of which they agreed. They invited us for a meeting again today. We deliberated on it. And we felt, okay, as patriotic Nigerians, that we should attend that meeting, thinking that they have the necessary commitments. We went to the meeting again today to our surprise. There was really no representation from government. There was no substantive ministers in that meeting. They all had representatives without mandates, apart from the Minister of uh, State for Labor that is actually the conciliator. There was no representation from the federal government. There was no representation from the state government. So technically, they abandoned the meeting. So getting to the meeting, there was nobody to offer anything. So they still remain adamant on the 60,000 Naira. So we're now wondering, why did they invite us for the meeting? That we attended this meeting as patriots, as people that love Nigeria and love Nigerians as well. But government on its own refused to do anything much more. Even a cobble was not added to the 60,000 Naira that they proposed on Tuesday that we rightfully rejected. And gentlemen, you remember very well that, uh, gentlemen of the press, you remember very well that we issued an ultimatum 1st of May 2024 during the May Day rally on two items. Number one, the electricity uh, tariff hike as well as uh, the uh, minimum wage. For the electricity tariff hike, you remember clearly that on the 13th of May, we had a protest to NEROC and to some of the discos, registering our, our displeasure. You know that up to today, there is no word from the government. Even the Minister of uh, Power never deemed it fit to even invite us for us to sit down and have that conversation. Because our, because our demand was that there should be a reversal from uh, 20, uh, 225 Naira per kilowatt down to where it was before, 66 Naira per kilowatt. So, uh, gentlemen of the press, we are calling on government to be much more responsive to the plight of the Nigerian workers. We are calling on them that the hardship that we are currently facing is as a result of the policies that we have brought about by this government that we felt we are not well thought out. And also, what has fed into this that we all know uh, is quite obvious. The removal of fuel subsidy, the flotation of Naira, and the increment of electricity uh, price hike. So, uh, gentlemen of the press, if you could remember, we had a meeting, a National Executive Council meeting of the NLC as well as the TUC, uh, where we were further charged that the leadership uh, should take charge and uh, will take all actions to call government to order at the end of the expiration of the ultimatum. Today is 31st of May, the ultimatum expires. So, uh, gentlemen of the press, um, we are hereby declaring the commencement of a nationwide industrial action, a nationwide strike, effective from Monday, June 3rd, 2024. And this strike shall be indefinite. And this strike shall be on until we have 
a new national minimum wage until government is serious and also the tariff increment in electricity is reversed. We are united on this. We believe that this is the way forward. We believe this is the time, as we have done over the years, to consistently stand with the working class of um, Nigeria because they have been battered and they have been uh, downtrodden the way it has been from May 29th till date. So, comrades, uh, comrade, gentlemen of the press, that is actually our stand on this. So, by midnight on Monday, June 3rd, we shall embark on a nationwide. Sunday midnight. Sorry, Sunday midnight. Sunday midnight. Uh, uh, Sunday midnight. We shall embark on a nationwide strike. Uh, effective Sunday midnight, uh, June second, 2024. I think that's an error. Thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you. Giving you this, we have to sit down and negotiate from where we are today. You know, it's like calling us tomorrow to say, let us continue with the negotiation. Now we negotiate from there. But not to call us to say, we are giving you 10 naira or 20 naira. You know, that will be out of, you know, the concept so of the negotiation. So if you are called maybe tomorrow, that means that uh, the Sunday midnight uh, ultimate tool. doesn't mean agreement. So until we sign an agreement on what is mutually agreeable by the parties, our action will be on, but our action is not such that we will not equally negotiate. Because the two parties are now going to negotiate under duress. We are under pressure. They will be under pressure. That's the meaning of this. So the earlier we resolve it, the greater for us. So when you hear of a National Executive Council of a, any level center, it comprises all the states and all the unions. So that is the situation, and that's where we got this mandate. And you equally witness it that at the May Day, where all workers gathered nationwide, this pronouncement was made. In fact, it was a public one. So it's not like a, there were two or three people. You know, it's a mass base. And that is this that, as of today, there is no minimum wage for Nigerian workers, technically, by the expiration of the act, you know, on by by. 18th of April. So as of now, we're operating without any law, you know, backing up the minimum wage. You know, they were talking about 30%, uh, uh, sorry, 100% increase. That's what they have offered. But the 100% uh, increase amounts to one loaf of bread per day for 30 days. That's what it amounts. They're not looking at the, the quality or the value of what they are offering to us. You know, and those are the issues that we are looking at and all of us must address because it's so it's, it's tight and there's nobody that can move on with this arrangement. And it is being done with inflation, devaluation, everything open. So if you take even the 600 we are proposing today, by next week, it will not make an impact. So we have to look at them holistically and see what we can do. Eh? Yes, and see what we can do, you know, to save the working class uh, in Nigeria. So, so far. Precisa, please. I want to know: Is there any plan by the leadership of the organized labor to sustain the inflation? Well, I don't know where uh, you are drawing that inference from. Because I think it's only Jilaf of uh, Japan, you know, that had grown to the level of paying wages of workers while on strike. Looking at the global model, uh, the Kosati, as big as they are, you know, equally. The, the strike you are talking of is when it enters maybe one month plus, and the workers will not get their wages. You now start to talk of how to subsidize them to survive. But at that level, you know, it's mostly done by unions. And it's good we understand this. NLC, TUC are being prepared by affiliates. 
you know, every union, even while this action is on, takes care of its members. But what you are saying, when we get to the river, we'll cross it. We'll make sure we sustain all the people involved, you know, to the best of our ability. So that is, and we are not doing a strike that will be one month without bite. I don't know whether you understand. Yes, I'm following you. I, I'm, I'm not sure where you have a, a, the labor centers in a country embarking on a strike for one month and you don't listen to them. You know, so I think what we should be praying for, for, for the people who are suffering so much, and those are some of our people, that was why we were reluctant. That was why we were virtually you know, telling them, let's find a solution. We in the meeting today, and we told them we have to be here and allow you to go and get mandate. We are ready to sleep here to allow you to get mandate to come back to this meeting. They say no, we should just allow them whenever they get mandate. That it is difficult to see even president that they don't have access and all that. And then they didn't come out with it. We found ourselves in a helpless situation. So that is where we are now. So everybody should be patient with us while we embark on this. Is there any plan by the leadership of the organized labor to sustain